Hello and welcome to Cosmic Commentary on Mythology. Now, just as you expand your common sense to create your cosmic sense, for this discussion, let's expand beyond the dogmatic views of our specific religious uh, teachings and examine sort of all religious views and sort of an overarching concept. Uh, and let's call that concept mythology. Now, to kick off this discussion, I'd like to bring in some great words from one of my favorite teachers, Mr. Joseph Campbell. Joseph, take it away. I see mythology when it's in a, in a, in a socially functioning way as serving four functions. Uh, the first function is what I would call the, met, the uh, mystical function. Mystical. It opens up a realization of the mystical dimension that behind the surface phenomenology of the world, there is a transcendent mystery source. And that is the source also within yourself. Oh, wow. And what of this mystery, you know? I mean, this life, this experience is a great mystery. But in my society, I feel like it's gone. There is no mystery. Um, what, I mean, has it been stolen? I mean, if it has, that is absolutely the biggest heist in the history of humanity. The second function has to do with the image of the world, what I would call the cosmological function. This changes radically from time to time. In the very early hunting and planting and uh, uh, gathering societies, relatively small horizon, and the science was that of what was visible. It was in, term, in terms of the visible world. The sun rose, went down. The moon rose, went down. With Copernicus, this all changed. The sun isn't rising. It's we that are twisting. The cosmology is totally changed. Cosmology and science changes. The a mythology to be up to date and really to work in the minds of people who are living in the modern scientific world must itself incorporate the modern scientific world. Ooh, okay, uh, uh, wave the flag on this one. We have dropped the ball, everybody. In my culture, in my society, we have not integrated our modern scientific understandings into our mythology. Uh, it's as if we're operating in some bizarro world kind of age of reason. We use reasons and logic to support our dogmatic beliefs. And then we'll go into science and we'll kind of cherry pick a couple things that support our beliefs and we'll discard the rest. Just like we'll discard the rest of the world's mythologies. I mean, this is absurd. I mean, let's expand again and remember that we're talking about the source of all that is. The source of all life. Everything all light, all dark, every atom and every molecule. And it's as if our brilliant brain-based human mentality has trumped this source. <laughs> anyway, back to Joseph. The third function of a mythology is sociological, to validate and maintain a certain specific social order here and now of this specific society. The fourth problem is the pedagogical problem, guiding the individual harmoniously through the inevitable crises of the stages of life in his world today. In terms of its goods, its values, its dangers. Now I just want to interject that uh, wouldn't we agree that most if not all the world's religions are currently seeing problems in our social order? Um, issues uh, within our moral compass? I would think so. What do you think? Oh, really? Back to Joseph. In the uh, last years of the last century and first of this, there was a very important German anthropologist named Bastian, Adolf Bastian, who was a world traveler and uh, early recognized that in the mythologies and religions of the world, there were certain themes, certain motifs 
that recurred everywhere. And he called these elementary ideas, elementar gedanken. He recognized also, of course, that in the various provinces and in various centuries, these elementary ideas appeared in different costumes, in different forms, with different applications, and associated with totally different social situations. And he called these local variations Völkergedanken, or ethnic, or folk ideas. Now this is a very important distinction. So imagine when you're a child, you read or read to a story uh, about a mischievous rabbit or a, a golden goose or a little choo-choo train that could talk. Now these tales encompassed, these folk tales, encompassed deeper elementary ideas that as a child you're unaware of. Uh, you're engrossed in the story and entertained by these uh, uh, experiences. Yet as you become an adult, the simple costumes of that story, uh, the rabbits and the choo-choo trains, dissolve and essentially we are left with the elementary idea or lesson that was taught within that tale. Uh, tales that teach things about how to treat other people, uh, what my role in society is, uh, you know, don't cheat or don't lie or don't treat the earth poorly. Whatever the story is, that idea is passed on through us. And Joseph's idea is that a mature and healthy evolving society has changes in how we see the folk. The costume, the stories change. But that core elementary idea of what we just talked about, how to treat people and behave and to work within a social order, remains with us and we now live that ideal. Now this gives us a clue to the two fundamental aspects of the mythological message. The elementary idea is enclosed in the folk idea. The source of the elementary idea is the human imagination, the human spirit. And its address is to the human imagination, the human spirit. The folk inflection relates specifically to the sociology of the local culture. The elementary idea is enclosed in the folk system. The rituals of the folk consequently also enclose the elementary instruction, the elementary idea. The young person growing up and being trained in the ritual life and moral order of the society is at the same time being introduced to the elementary ideas which are the very ground of his own nature. So the first function then is to induct the young person into the society. And since the enclosed elementary idea speaks deeply to the individual's own spirit, he is deeply engaged in the society. And this is the kind of engagement that comes um, of identification with the society that comes from induction into a traditional culture. We don't have it. Our commitment to our society is from up here. People ask for reasons, you know. What's this war about? Am I gonna go into it? I mean, you don't get that in the other kind of a system at all. Your society is you in some deep way. So my point here is that we have now, through our haphazard sort of mythological, cosmological confusion, allowed ourselves to ascribe folk aspects of deity, for example, as fact. And that now it is, the battle is on because we feel that we have to destroy all other competing images or folk representations of the one source of all life. And, uh, I mean, it's on, and it has been, and it's terrifying and horrifying. <laughs> this is 
religious warfare. This is cultural warfare. You know, I mean, get your ticket. This is the cage match of the century. You know, my folk versus your folk. Oh boy, silly. Because we really have a very common elementary understanding with all the varied mythologies, religions, and cultures of the earth, yet we're locked into this battle. Mm. Now this also illustrates another idea that I want to get across, and that is that the elementary ideas that we are taught in my society as children are actively disregarded by the leaders of our culture and our society. I know we might say, hey, he's not my leader, she's not my leader. But the reality is, say you were a child and you were taught the Ten Commandments. Uh, well, as you grow and you, and those are kind of literal, but as you grow and you become older, you'll see, wait a second. All these people are cheating. All these people are lying. All these people are coveting. All these people are killing. I mean, this is a huge hypocritical turmoil crazy adventure and we are all sorting through this right now and what i would like to say about that is that today in our society how on earth can we tell our children not to use violence to solve problems when the leaders of our society do it all the time now don't get me wrong i am deeply honored and deeply moved by all the religious traditions and teachers of the earth. Um, their lives, uh, their teachings, their sacrifices are huge, absolutely huge watershed moments in human society. Yet we have failed to keep an up-to-date cosmology in my society. And this has left us in a very precarious position. For I really do feel that if we can integrate this new scientific paradigm into our mythology, into our, the religious teachings, into the stories we're told, we can enhance our reality. We can expand our waking awareness of the present moment. And we can manifest, as Joseph would say, a fully functioning and healthy mythology. Thanks for watching.